Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. Now for this one we are going to do one of Sweden's best rated IPAs. I've been lucky enough to get a hold of two of the highest rated IPAs that are available from here in Sweden. So the first one of these that we're going to look at is OO Brewing's Narangi beer. So this one is an IPA of course and it comes in at 6.8% rated, 99 overall and 99 within the style on rate beer. So it is a pretty damn good beer of course. The other IPA that I have is the Stiegberg's GBG Beer Week 2016 and that is a tweaked version of this one apparently so I thought this was the best one to review first and of course number 900 will be in the middle of these two reviews. So I hope you enjoy all three videos but we're going to get cracking with this one now. So as always with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. The brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from OO Brewing. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do subscribe to the channel. The whole channel has a geography tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of the beers from different countries as well as the whiskey and sake reviews and other things and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. Always interesting to hear from you guys and your support and input to the channel are always hugely appreciated. So anyway to tell you a little bit about OO Brewing. So OO Brewing as I mentioned to you are based in Gothenburg or Jutteborg as you would say in Swedish and they were founded back in 2011 by Olaf and Ola Andersson who are childhood friends and for many years they were also avid home brewers as well but the pair have always been really interested in beer and Ollie apparently was really heavily involved in the Gothenburg beer scene pre-drinking age and he's also the brewmaster at Stiegberg's Breggery in Gothenburg as well. That's why I was saying these two breweries have a very close ties and this of course is where the OO beers are produced. So while Ola is brewing, Olaf actually manages the business side of the brewery and apparently they really just want to make beers that they would enjoy to drink themselves and a lot of their beers are very highly rated. You've seen the one that I did that was the uh, the collaboration brew, the Black Cat. You've also seen the Baltic Porter that I've done from these guys as well, which was really quite nice. So do check out my other reviews from OO Brewing and I'm sure I will review more in the very near future. But I'm really looking forward to this one. This is another one that was recommended to me, of course, by my friend Andreas at Ul Rezan. So make sure you check out the link to his blog in the description below. He's really, he's got a really nice blog there. It is in Swedish, but if you use Google Chrome, it actually translates quite well. So do make sure you check him out if you want to see a kind of Swedish perspective on the Swedish beer scene. So for this one, it says on the side here, our Narangi is an IPA brewed without any fruit, only pure hop juice, made primarily with mosaic, with support from Citra and Columbus, nice hops actually, best stored cold and dark, star cool, 330 milliliters, alcohol is 6.8% and then some other stuff about the ingredients and things like that. And the artwork on this one is an Orange Mindy 2016 by Lindgren and Lindqvist, I think, this is actually a different artwork than what was on the previous one, but it should be quite nice. When I looked at what Narangi was, it's actually a village in India, and it also seems to be it's some sort of orange as well. And I think some of the previous versions of this one had some orange actually added into the brew, but I'm not certain about that. So it should be quite interesting to try. I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork on this one. Very simply done. There you can see on the side there. I'm not sure exactly what one of the Indian languages that is, of course because there's many, India of course has lots of different ethnicities and things like that, very very big country, but then you can see on the side here, best before the 24th of April 2017, and I think it says batch 36 as well, so it should be quite nice, there you can see the OO website and symbol and things like that, so yeah, this should be a very very nice beer, so let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste and plain bottle cap as I showed you as well. So yeah, nice smoky opening on this one and we'll get it out and into the glass and I tell you something it really does smell quite orangey and tropical this one mmm really nice looking beer I heard that this one is actually modelled on the New England style of IPA so I'm really interested to see how it turns out in that regard but as you can see from the colour of this beer it really is you know it just looks like a tropical kind of pineapple fruit juice or something like that it's a really bright yellow colour there's some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there but quite a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head which incidentally is maybe just about a quarter finger but if I sugar it up it becomes a little bit more and it's yeah I think it's fair to say that's a pretty much pure white head on this one as you can see if I put my fingers behind the glass there's no transparency to this beer at all it really is very very opaque and 
as a, as a here, that is the kind of typical style for the New England IPA. So it looks very nice. Let's have a look at the aroma then. Yeah, you know, you can really smell the citron on this one. So with this beer, I'm not getting so much in the way of orange on this, I don't think. It's mainly a tropical fruit that I'm getting out of this beer. So there's some nice, almost kind of pineapple-y notes in this one. Yeah, there's a little bit of a kind of, you can really smell the citra coming out of this one. So there's a bit of, there's some kind of passion fruit in there, you know, sort of mangoes, maybe a little bit of the lighter lychees or watermelon kind of things. You know, these typical sort of lighter tropical fruit notes that you get from the citra really coming out of this one quite nicely. I'm not getting so much of the a kind of darker grapefruit that I would expect from the, the Columbus or the Mosaic in this one. But it's got, obviously, it's got a little bit of floral character to it. It does smell more grassy, though. There's not too much in the way of pine raisins from this one. Really, the aroma is leaning towards the tropical fruit, mainly the citra, I think. Like I say, passion fruit, a bit of mango, maybe some pineapple in there, too, as well. But the sort of lychees and uh, the kind of lychee and almost watermelony character coming out of this one a little bit. Gooseberries, probably, is a good way to describe this aroma as well. But really, it's leaning towards those lighter notes of the, the citra hop that I'm talking about. There's not so much in the way of the grapefruit that you might expect from the hops in this one. Good bit of grassiness as well. And you can smell a little bit of almost biscuity sweetness. I'm getting just a little bit of biscuity character from this beer, but a lot of pale and kind of bready malt coming out when you sugar it up. Maybe there's a little bit of earthiness too, and of course that is the mosaic. It has a little bit of earthy character in it as well. But overall, it does smell like a really, really nice beer. So let's, let's actually have a go with this one and see how we get on then. So this one is the Narangi from OO Brewing in Gothenburg here in Sweden. Let's get stuck into this guy. Score. Oh yeah. That is a damn good beer. You know, I can see the difference actually. This is one of the first kind of New England IPAs that I've tried actually and I can really see the difference between this one and the West Coast. If this is kind of archetypical for the style for the style if you like, there really is a completely kind of different feel to these and I can see why they're getting popular in you know, breweries like Trillium and Treehouse and um, I think his Harry Topper one as well. But really I can the the, fl the flavours in this beer are lovely. This one, this is definitely up there with some of the best IPAs that I've reviewed on the channel. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, that's really really nice. For me, it really it it just it, it's excellent. I mean, the middle of your palate, the, the the malt base on this one really is quite simple. You know, it's got a bready character. There's a bit of pale malt underneath it, but really the middle of your palate is just kind of engulfed by this sort of uh, the bready character that comes out of this beer. The malt base on this one is quite simple. There's maybe a little tiny bit of biscuit sweetness, but I think overall it really is more just a plain kind of bread malt base. But the interesting aspect of this beer really is the hops. So in the back corners of the palate, there's a teeny tiny little bit of earthiness. As you come further forward, I think there's a little bit of pine resin just underpinning this beer. That earthiness from the mosaic, incidentally, it comes out a little bit more as you move into the aftertaste, I would say. Yeah, that's really nice, this one. Mm. So yeah, the, the hoppy side of things becomes a bit more floral. I'm not getting so much in the way of pine resins in this one. I would definitely say that. It gets a bit more floral and aromatic as you come further forward, but around the front curve of the tongue, it's definitely a little bit more grassy, I would say, than, uh, than pine resin. It really is. The hops blend in this very nicely. I like that little touch of earthiness that you get from the mosaic. The mosaic, of course, is a hop that gives you some really nice complexity in the beer. That's nice. The fruity character in this is really good as well. So just behind the front curve of the tongue there you'll get that little oily bubble where the, the hoppy flavours, the, the juicy fruit character starts to come out of this beer. So I want to say there's a good bit of passion fruit in there. There maybe is a little bit of grapefruit. When you move into the aftertaste 
you can feel that kind of slightly darker flavour that you always get from grapefruit. You can feel that coming out as you push into the aftertaste, but really at the start of the palate, I think it's more a kind of, um, there's a bit of passion fruit in there, and then on top of those slightly more dark and sour fruit flavours, you start to feel the elements of the citra coming out in this one. And as the flavour progresses, actually, I'm getting a bit more of the, uh, the kind of floral character. I can feel a little bit more of the floral character coming out that you would expect of the Columbus. Yeah, that's really nice. The fruity character in this one is nice. You know, on the basis of this beer, you know, the rating that it has, 99 overall, you know, for me that's right. This is a really interesting thing. This is one of the first New England style IPAs that I've tried. These guys have got quite a reputation like from from OO Brewing and Stieg Berriots. Um, they really do have a good reputation for these beers and I can see why. You know, these are really really good beers. I'd certainly put this in the top five IPAs and things that I've reviewed on the channel. You know, Amar Batch 1000 is another one that springs to mind. The, uh, the Ninja vs Unicorn of course from Pipeworks was another one. Lavish IPA from Opigors was really good as well and Zombie Dust. You know, this one it's a different, it's a different style but you know in terms of quality this beer certainly is up with those ones. Mm. But the fruit character in this is quite complex so just take a little bit of time like I say I think there's a bit of grapefruit just underpinning it maybe a bit of passion fruit on top of that there's some kind of mangoey character and then a bit and as you move into the aftertaste there's a little bit of kind of lychee or gooseberry or something it's those lighter elements of the citra hop starting to come out of this beer so the fruity character in this one is really quite unique so just pay attention to that and savour this beer if you get the chance to try it. I actually just bought it, the day that I'm filming this review is the day that I bought this beer. So make sure you check this one out if you get the chance, it's in the small portiers just now, just in Sysgen Belogit, so definitely get it if you get a hold of it, it really deserves its rating on, on the basis of taste in my opinion and this probably is one of the, as I say, one of the best IPAs you're going to find in Sweden. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I'd say this is mid-bodied, maybe even pushing the slightly heavier bodied thing and that really, the reason I say it's heavier bodied is probably because of the malt base, the bready malt character on this one makes it feel that little bit heavier and maybe that's a difference between the East Coast IPAs and the West Coast IPAs. The West Coast IPAs I think are a little bit lighter and more caramelly whereas this East Coast IPA maybe is, is maybe a bit more bready and things. I do need to try more of them before I can distinguish the kind of style, like the stylistic difference if you like. But the malt base in this one really is quite smooth, it's got a good bit of body to it. The hoppy side of things are nice, there's a good bit of bitterness to this one. Like I say, floral, slightly earthy in the back corners of the palate too, but the fruity character of this is nice and juicy and for me, that's where the kind of complexity in this beer lies. And I do like that little earthy hint that the mosaic has given in this one and the floral aspects that you have from the Columbus in this beer really suit it quite nice. I just want to make sure it's Columbus and not uh, Centennial. Yeah, it is Columbus they've said in this one. So yeah, the, the, this whole beer has a really nice complexity to it. The hoppiness comes out really nicely and in my opinion it's fully deserving of its rating in 99 on rate beer. Really superb beer. So if you get the chance to try the Narangi from OO Brewing, I really recommend you do it. And Gothenburg generally is a very good beer city these days. So if you're visiting Sweden, that's where you need to go. So yeah, and um, thank you once again for watching my beer review. It's been really cool to review this beer that is so highly rated here in Sweden. I can see why on the basis of this review. This is a very good brewery as well. So if you're interested in Swedish beer, OO is somewhere that you're really not going to go wrong if you pick something you enjoy from them. But yeah, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Make sure you check out my social media. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer and the brewery in the comment section below. And don't forget to recommend me some other beers. This one was the Narangi from OO Brewing in Gothenburg here in Sweden. Really top quality beer. If you enjoy your New England style IPAs, I'm sure you'll enjoy this one. Until the next time, it's Slangy just now. And like I said, review number eight hundred, review number 901 will be the Stieg Berriot's GVG Beer Week 2016. So you can look forward to that and I hope you enjoy review number 900 as well. Score.